Uh, thank you for that, and uh, welcome back to the show. Rick Tittle with you coast to coast and around the world on American Forces Radio Network. We begin this hour with the Chief Digital Officer of Genpact LLC. It is Sanjay Srivastava, and he's here to talk about the 24-hour melting point challenge, leveraging technology to help fight climate change. Sanjay, welcome to the show. Uh, What does this entail, please? Rick, thanks for having me here. Look, we're all very keen to see uh, important issues like climate change get addressed in the long run. And one of the things we're doing today is actually bringing a lot of awareness to the role of data and technology and change management that can help solve for these problems. And so what we've done is we've set up a social media challenge, and we've carved out a three-ton replica in ice of the Envision Virgin racing car that we support and, uh, and work on. And we put it out in London in the weather, out in the open, and we're letting it melt. And we've been working behind the scenes to use artificial intelligence, machine learning, to actually predict what percent of that car will melt in 24 hours. But more importantly, we've opened it for the world to participate. And for every entry that we're getting, we're actually donating a dollar to the Arctic uh, project, which is all about researching and helping conserve the Arctic ice shelf. And so it's, uh, it's a fantastic activity, and, a true, and we really hope it brings a lot of visibility and awareness to a really important issue that we jointly see. Very interesting. Let's talk a little bit, if you would, about the uh, Formula E, London e Pre. I know this started about five or six years ago with uh, electric cars. What, what does it entail? Yeah, you know, we did, uh, we've been at this for, uh, for a number of years now, and we think electric cars, uh, vehicles is obviously a large, uh, will play a large role in the future of mobility and transportation. And as we get through to autonomous driving, as we get through to electric vehicles, it's going to have large-scale impacts in society and on, on, on us and our civilization at large. Um, one of the ways to actually uh, lean in into that future is to get involved with, um, and what we've done is gotten involved with the electric vehicle uh, car racing circuit. And the idea here is that, um, you know, uh, when, you, when you're in, in, a, uh, in, a, in a race uh, with electric cars, you're looking to optimize and you're looking to predict and you're looking to use artificial intelligence to really have the proper balance and the optimal use of battery power. And being able to predict when you take that sharp turn, when you accelerate against a competitor, uh, when you, uh, if you will, go into the East track, uh, is uh, is a very dynamic decision, and it has and it depends on many different pieces of data coming together, and then and then us being able to run machine learned analytics and artificial algorithms on it, artificial intelligence. And so that's what we do. We help the team succeed and win in races, and by so doing, we're obviously enjoying the moment. We're living sort of the win, uh, you know, the the spirit. Um, but more importantly, I think the algorithms we're building together today are the ones that in the future will come into autonomous driving, that they'll change the, the curve of adoption for electric vehicles. And I think it's going to have a large impact on, on, uh, on uh, climate change. And so, you know, we've been at it now for a few years, and we started by essentially helping that race team, uh, which is one of the founding members of that uh, circuit, win. And it was all about using all of the data that we could capture and running analytics and AI on it to be able to predict and 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 provide input on what needed to happen next in a race so you can win it. And we've expanded from there. We've expanded there. We helped the, that team and the organization become carbon neutral, and we helped them manage through all of the data points that help them make the right decisions and influence change to be, um, to be carbon neutral. And so we're very supportive of that. And now we've kind of expanded that relationship with this melting ice challenge because we want to bring awareness to this um, transformation issue that we face as a civilization. And it's very solvable with people's involvement and the right capabilities and data technologies. You know, I would think like traditional racers might think, you know, electric cars, well, you know, that's kind of lame. But then you think, well, I know how fast a Tesla is. And then you see these cars and they're open wheel cars and they're so unique looking and they're so cool. And they are fast. So how long do you think it's going to take for the people to move over from the, uh, you know, the fossil fuel vehicles to the, the e-cars? 
Well, the trend line is already obvious. You're starting to see a very strong pickup just in, in normal life on electric cars uh, in, in the world over. I think what's happening with the racing circuit is we're bringing visibility, and more importantly, it's the innovation that happens, right? So if you look at what's happened to, for instance, charging capacity, if you look at the kinds of batteries that we use today uh, and the efficiency that delivers, it's improved significantly, and it's happened because we're innovating at the front of the line on the racing circuit. You know, we'll start with a car at the start of the season, right? It's the same body. It's the same chassis. And we'll end that season with exactly the same car, the same body, the same chassis, the same hardware, if you will. But through the course of the season, we'll have done six or more software upgrades, so new algorithms, new machine learning models. And if you will, we'll have changed the software on that same hardware. And the car ends the race significantly faster than it did uh, starting the race. All right? And so we're able to see these dynamic, large changes that are happening. And they're happening on the racing circuit today but they're the very same algorithms that over time will translate into normal life. And we think this is a irreversible sort of curve that we're on, and, uh, and we definitely see mobility as sort of the future of transportation. Well, in your idea, to me, the electric car is really going to take off when someone can invent, you know, the 1,000-mile battery. How far do you weigh do you think we are from something like that? Well, you know, look, I think, I think the bigger question to ask is, um, how far can I take the car? And that's a function of two things. It's a function of the size of the battery, and it's a function of the availability of charging stations. I mean, we don't have a car using fossil fuel today that can drive a 1,000 miles. You'd have to stop at a gas station and refill that tank mm -hmm. to be able to take it to the next step. And electric vehicles is exactly the same mindset. So it's that combination of that charging grid, the, avail the ability to just pull in somewhere and charge, the time it takes for it to recharge itself, which is a which is a combination of which is really just the technology behind it, right? So the 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 the, the power and the uh, amp at which you charge, and we're seeing significant improvements there. And then it's the battery capacity, and then you combine that with how do you use it more efficiently, which is really the work we're doing with Envision Virgin Racing. We're helping them optimize the performance of that same battery, the identical battery every other car in that race uses. And we're using AI to be able to predict how to use that better. And it's those things that actually make the impact on the adoption and the use of electric cars. I don't think it's just the capacity of the battery. It's the performance, it's the efficiency, and it's the ability to plug into a network, a grid of, uh, of places you can recharge. Yeah, if you could recharge as fast as it would take to to refill a tank of gas, it's very interesting. Last question for you, and I'm only half joking. When you're making all these AI algorithms, do you guys, are you ever careful to not make it so good that it decides to eliminate the flawed human race? Interesting. So, you know, uh, it's a great question, and there's so much discussion on AI and the future of AI. And look, the best way to think about artificial intelligence is to take the word artificial out and replace it with augmented intelligence. And here's what I mean by that. When we design these AI algorithms, they're meant to be recommendations. They're meant to be insight. They're meant to be inputs that we're giving a driver, a race engineer, a director, and then giving the ability for them to quickly either uh, say yes or no to it. So, you know, AI is great as a prediction machine. It's the best prediction engine that we have uh, today better than, it's actually better than human capability. But prediction is different from judgment, and judgment is human. And so the idea always with AI is augmented intelligence. It's about combining the best of prediction with human judgment to make the right decision. And one of the reasons, by the way, we're so passionate on this topic is, you know, look, you know, I love doing this, but in our normal life, we're helping large global corporations digitally transform their operations. And if you think about it, that's a data and analytics and AI and automation problem combined with a change management problem, right? And so climate change is very much the same. At the end, it's a data and insights issue combined with change management. And I think AI plays a significant role in giving us the right predictions so we can action with human judgment the next steps on it. Very interesting stuff from Sanjay Srivastava. He is with Genpact, and uh, we were talking about the 24-hour melting point 
challenge at the uh, head of the uh, Formula E London E Prix and uh, all the funds supporting the Arctic Ice Project too. Sanjay, uh, thank you so much for coming on. Appreciate your time and your insights. Welcome. Great to be here. Thank you. Welcome.